overcame caution. Milo squeezed through the crack. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> Milo squeezed through the crack and found himself in a Christmas wonderland. The room was adorned with sparkling ornaments and a towering Christmas tree stood in the corner. Ours isn't towering this year, is it? But we do have sparkly ornaments that your father called ghetto. So, the cat likes it, I like it. So I want And a towering Christmas tree stood in the corner adorned with radiant lights and, uh, and colorful bubbles. Bubbles are Christmas Christmas ornaments. That's what it is. Um, uh, Milo's eyes widened with the amazement as he beheld the feast spread across a table late, laden with cookies, nuts, and cheese. Unable to resist the temptation, Milo darted towards the table. His hunger overcoming his fear of being discovered. My hunger overcame my fear of being married to your father. So, you know. <coughs> hunger is a powerful driver. Don't ever forget that. You've never really been hungry. You just, you, <laughs> you refuse to eat dinner. Oh no, you think that's hungry? You have hunger. Hopefully you never know hungry. You make some good choices. Fake worm. Clothes. 
was too trusting of my little not survive in the real world. I'm sorry to say my Anyways, with a and with a grateful squeak. <laughs> Do you like that? Aren't I good at reading stories? With a grateful squeak. He nibbled on the offered treat. The cheese was rich and flavorful. Mm, yummy cheese. Makes you fat, but you know. You'll understand what once you are your your um metabolism just <sighs> completely tanks after you turn thirty, especially thirty five god. <sighs> uh, warming Milo's belly and filling him with a newfound sense of comfort. That's what happens when you've eaten after you've been hungry for a few days, yeah, I know that feeling. It's called being on a diet. Crash diet. That's what it's called. Your mom has been on it. It's right a mold. Mold. Eleanor giggled watching Milo enjoy his impromptu feast. You could do with an impromptu feast. I made everything you see in there except the bunch that the Lesters brought. I call them the Hannibal Lecters. <laughs> You're welcome to stay for Christmas, little friend. Said Eleanor. No one should be hungry during the holidays. Yeah, well, there are people hungry during the holidays, so there's homeless people down the street from us. Did you know that? That's why we can't go to the park anymore because there's some um, oh, there are so many homeless people there. Milo couldn't believe his luck. The little mouse who had set out in search of a mere morsel of food for his Christmas meal had found himself welcomed into a home filmed with warmth and kindness as the night unfolded. Milo and Eleanor shall shared many festive delights. The two of them forged an unexpected friendship the magical Christmas spirit worked its wonders, turning an ordinary, ordinary night into a tale of generosity and joy. That's the reason you're having trouble reading, because the G of generosity and the J of joy sound exactly the same. Oh no, but it's my fault. Your father thinks it's my fault that you can't read the Milo, once but a hungry, humble mouse, a humble, hungry mouse, in the cold winter night, was now nestled by the fireplace, surrounded by the love and laughter of newfound friends. I think that's friend death. I think they got that wrong because who is he else is he friends with but Eleanor? That's why they, they need to not use chat GPT to edit their books. Publishers. Ugh. They didn't have chat GPT in Jane Austen's era. And look, they made actual good books that stood the test of 200 years of time. <sighs> I needed Mr. Darcy, that's what I need. She married, I married, what's his name, the, 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 the equivalent of the, the, the cousin, Collins. <laughs> So, and so beneath the twinkling lights and the gentle glow of the moon, Milo experienced the magic of Christmas, a time when even the smallest of creatures could find a feast and a friend. again. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Santa will come. If, you're, if you've been good. If you've been good. <laughs> no, let's hope that Santa and I have a different definition of 